Welcome to Digital Asset News, like the top stories in crypto. And I'm bringing out a bite-sized piece. As today is like the thumbnail suggests, I'm going to be talking about the things that I've learned along the way that have gotten me to where I am right now and how I would actually do things over. And in reality, this is kind of like a, a little mini guideline if you're just starting into cryptocurrency and the things that I have learned. So we'll take a look at... Uh, uh, the big stuff, which would be take profits and uh, put those into stores of value. We'll talk all about that. Uh, some of the biggest gainers in the crypto market throughout the years. We're going to talk about crypto death, the naysayers that are out there, and there is never a shortage of those. And also timing is everything. And lastly, we'll, just, we'll do a quick update about Ethereum 2.0 and uh, how rapidly that's coming into the space. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look at what's going on uh, into the market today. Today is Thursday, beautiful day. And hey, we're up 1.9 trillion. We're up uh, 2%. Bitcoin price is uh, 43,200. And we're still, uh, as far as sentiment, uh, Bitcoin daily sentiment looks like it's pretty bullish. 64 of 100. We're using Trade the Chain for sentiment analysis, and that's how we can find that information. Links in the description. But uh, if we take a look at uh, the different crypto assets that are out there, Ethereum is doing pretty good in 24 hours, 2%, and it's almost about to make $3,000 again. Tether's still at number three because people continue to uh, sell a little bit here, and they've tethered up. That's why uh, the market cap has increased. Cardano's at 209. Everything's, um, you know, a little sideways in all honesty. 2% uh, for Avalanche. Remember, Avalanche was just talked about by Coinbase Pro. Looks like they're going to list that uh, as soon as they can on regular Coinbase. If the liquidity is there, news flash it is so it'll be there so expect a, a bump in price from that that's pretty much what's going on so the market cap overall is uh, a little bit up but the big the big uh, top coins are not really moving fantastically maybe there's some uh, bigger plays in the in the top 500 but that's what we have as far as the top so what i want to do is just really get into uh today's uh, topics really what it is and the big thing i wanted to put this out because I've learned a couple things along the way since I started in 2017. And I want to preface it with this. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor and my goals are not your goals. Um, if you're just getting into cryptocurrency and you're like, uh, you know, 18 year old uh, person uh, or maybe 20s and, you know, you just do starting off. My goals are obviously not your goals as opposed to somebody who is in their 70s and they are, have been retired for years. Now, our goals could align or they could not. It really doesn't matter. But these are the things that I have learned for me and uh, how it's going to work out moving forward. So if I could redo everything, the first thing I would tell myself back in 2017 is take profits, Rob. Take profits because all the talk about diamond hands and you got to hold on forever is pure nonsense. And I know Michael Saylor will talk about that as far as like Bitcoin, like why would you do that? Why would you get rid of it? Da, da, da. He's got a vision. Again, my goals are not his goals. So uh, when I start to open up and get a multi-billion dollar company, yeah, maybe I'll stick around with it a little bit. But right now, this is what I have. So just ask yourself, does this align with what I want to do? And for me, taking profits along the way, it's just good practice. Because if you can do that, then when there's huge dips, like we just saw a 50% retracement not too long ago in June, uh, May and June, you could actually buy uh, more crypto at a cheaper price and then really hold on to things. I'm not telling you to get all, all the way out, but that is how like I'm going to start doing these things. And the problem with taking profits is I'm bad at it. I'm real good at dollar cost averaging. I'm real good at buying on the dips, but I have a hole in my investment strategy and I'm gonna shore that up with a couple of people who are gonna help me out and you'll be seeing them on this channel. Everybody talks about buying the dip and buy this and buy that, but rarely do you hear people talk about, I took profits, this is what it's, I'm doing, and I'm gonna do this. It's not, I mean, some channels do, some channels don't or most channels don't. And I want to be uh, doing, talking about that, about when I take profits, why I took profits, and what I did with those profits. So that is just one, one aspect of it. Also, uh, what I wish I could tell myself back in the day is this. Like, if you're going to take profits, don't just leave them in cash. Put them into stable coins. This is what I do right now. Because of uh, Voyager and their loyalty program, and I am uh, on the top tier, just so you know, I'm a navigator. I've got over 20,000 um uh voyager tokens uh when i transfer everything and i sell my crypto assets what i do is i put it into usdc which is a stable coin not tether i'm not a big fan of tether just not you may be whatever but usdc i get a nine percent regular yield by holding in a voyager plus since i'm a navigator i get an extra 1.5 percent yield so i get 10.5 percent 
just for holding a stable coin that does not fluctuate because it is backed by the dollar and Circle is the one that has uh, paired itself up with Visa, very stable company, and that's what I'm doing. On top of the fact that because I have the VGX tokens, I get a staking reward of 7%. I get the uh, crypto back rewards of 3x for all the different trades that I do, which is every two weeks, which is pretty sizable. And then uh, withdrawal discounts, what I rarely do, and debit cards and desktop and all that good stuff. So to me personally, I don't understand why, if you are using Voyager, why, would, why wouldn't you just at least have 500 tokens? That's, again, one of the things I look at, I'm like, why, why not? But that's how it is. If you're looking to sign up with Voyager, there's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And you can get going. Uh, I think uh, it's one of the one of the better ones around. That is for sure. So, that is two of the things as far as uh, you know, uh, taking profits and stores of value. My strategy really hasn't changed too much. As I start to take out profits, I'm going to put them into stores of value. USDC land uh, investment properties really ramping up on investment properties uh, into my Amazon business staking my uh, I Trust Capital IRA. It's over there on the left hand. <laughs> Sorry left-hand side, everything's opposite. But then also there's another wrinkle I want to talk to you about because I just got introduced to this. Uh, Masterworks has reached out to me and they were talking to me about talking about their project. I haven't said yes or no, I'm just here talking to you about it. Nothing has changed place. I'm going to be doing a deep dive into this, but it looks pretty interesting because what they do is they buy multi-million dollar pieces of artwork. They uh, tokenize, not tokenize it, excuse me. They put shares of it, which you can purchase those shares. So you can buy a multi-million dollar uh, painting and just put whatever you want into it. 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 200 bucks, or whatever else the, the minimum price is. And then as it appreciates, uh, then you can sell either uh, through them or, for, or as they sell the painting or on a secondary market. And what's great about this is, first of all, it is a truly uncorrelated asset class, art. Who talks about art? Who gets into it? the super rich and the super rich were the only ones that were available to buy multi-million dollar pieces. Now you have this opportunity. It's 16%. And here they're talking about Jim, crazy Jim Cramer is talking about it, but it does make a lot of sense. And uh, for me, I'm going to be doing again, a deep dive in this one, because if you can put into stocks, uh, you know, equities, cryptocurrencies and gold, well, what happened recently? Everything went down and gold underperformed too. So if we're looking for an uncorrelated asset, Here's another option. There's a link in the description, looks just like this, and you can skip the wait list and go from there. So that is the first part about what I wish I could uh, go back in time and tell myself. And the second thing I wish I could tell myself is just talk about the biggest gainers. And to me, when I look at things, the biggest gainers since 2017 on have been all the ones that are kind of in a bubble, let's just be honest. So in the beginning of 2017, uh, the big gainers were ICOs. And then uh, later on, it was all about uh, yield farming. And then uh, later on, it was all about uh, meme coins, uh, and Dogecoin and everything else. And then lately, it's been all about NFTs. Now, did all these projects go to the moon? Yeah, they did. Did they stay there? No, they did not. And especially the ICOs and things like that. I'm not saying NFTs are gonna pop tomorrow and that they're all gonna pop, but I just cannot believe that every single NFT that is being bought out there for three, five, 10 ETH, uh, which is, you know, $30,000, $100,000, $200,000 and up, is going to stay at that massive valuation. So there's one thing I could say if you're, again, my goal is not your goals, if you're more on the risky side, uh, this is something to get into and then flip those types of things and make profits. That is not investment advice and just investment opinion. But if I could go back, I wish I could tell myself like, hey, Rob, maybe we should look at uh, some of these outliers. So there is that. And then also another big thing that I wish I could uh, go back and tell myself is that uh, crypto is never going to die. It's just not. Uh, and when I got in 2017, there was talk about everything going to zero and crashing to zero. And even people would come out. And I didn't, since I was new, I didn't really understand it. But now we are so far along. Um, we have, for Pete's sakes, we've got El Salvador using it as legal tender. We've got BlackRock investing into Bitcoin mining. BlackRock is a $9 trillion asset under management. We've got JP Morgan, uh, who is offering cryptocurrency. We've got different, I mean, huge banks getting into it. Uh, a load up of ETFs is being pushed to the SEC. And uh, there's just so many things going on. And like I said, the NFT part is actually going uh, global. So for, for me to say that, uh, to realize that it's not going to zero, I think is a big, relief. Now, 
there's a lot of different things that are going on as far as like with regulation and the SEC coming down and uh, all of those things that are around that are surrounding it. But I personally believe that the SEC is not cannot regulate this to oblivion. If they do come out and say, hey, this is a, this is a security. OK, it's a security. So either they're going to have to grandfather everybody in or they're going to have to find everybody. But we're still going to move on because everybody wants it and everybody's going to start using it. And it's a more efficient way because people want things that are faster, cheaper, better. And if you can get those types of things in cryptocurrency, then why wouldn't you uh, get onto it? You can't stop what's already been the genies out of the bottle, as Digital Dave likes to say. So that is the one thing. Also, people talk about, well, you know, what about the nodes and things like that for just for Bitcoin itself? Did you know that there is there is a satellite uh, launched by Blockstream that transmits um, Bitcoin all around the globe 24-7, 365? So even if the nodes all shut down, which would never happen anyhow, we got it. Uh, we got uh, blockchain in space. So I just thought that was interesting to to bring to everybody's attention. Again, I don't think that uh, Bitcoin or any well, I can't say any. Mo, I can't even say most. All cryptocurrencies are going to zero. Let me say this. This is why I talk about a lot of the things that are in the top twenty because I don't really believe that a lot of things that are outside the top one hundred or two hundred are going to make it. They're just not. They're going to go away. Uh, and that's just how I see things. There's not enough. I only there's not enough space for this. I think a lot of things are going to crash down. And uh, that's why I try to be safe. Again, that's my goals. Your goal could be like, hey, I want to invest in number 500. Go right ahead. Uh, just do your own research. And then also another big thing to talk about is the naysayers, which is like there is no shortage of naysayers coming out saying it's going to die. It's going to go away. It's kind of like what we just talked about before. But I want to really dig down into this because I remember in 2017 when everything went up, and then everything crashed down. We had crypto winter for th three straight years. Um, there was a bombardment of people going, that was fun. This will never come back. And this was in like, like crypto chats, crypto videos. Uh, people who were involved in the cryptocurrency space were saying it was going to die. There's no shortage of naysayers, which was to me, it was like, well, I don't understand how that could actually happen. So when you see things come about, just realize that there's people out there that just don't want this to succeed. They don't want it to actually happen. And they think it's all going to go down. I mean, that's just uh, pretty much par for the course. And then lastly, timing is everything. And I think in all honesty, if I had to do it all again, I would say, well, first of all, I'd say, Rob, I only invest in 2017 early part and then sell everything in December. That's what I would say, obviously. And now if I can go back, uh, if I can go back in time, I would tell uh, Rob, hey, Rob, invest 2017. Also invest towards the tail end of uh, 2021. because I think things are going to be uh, fireworks. And this is how I see things going. This is um, a the total cryptocurrency market cap for the in, in, the entirety with Bitcoin included. And you can see it wasn't too much, you know, brown here. Then we had some spikes and over here. Now we're at, uh, gosh, where we're at? We're at, yeah, like two... 1.9 trillion dollars today. Okay, not too bad. And that's the total market cap. But I want to show you is this. If you take a look at the market cap between uh, 2014 to the end of 2017, uh, this is the market cap. And it went all the way up here, right? Nice big push. But it won't, what I want you to notice is this. See this market cap here is going on this. See this big dip right here? You know when that was? July and another big dip here in uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, September. And now what I want you to sh show you is from 2018 to now see these big dips right here when is this uh this is also july 2021 and this is also september 2021 so again we had a dip and a dip in july and september hockey stick and over here we had a dip and a dip and i expect a big hockey stick now i could be wrong but i think that's where things are going and that is what I like to tell my former self of what to do. And also the big thing I would say is if this was available, I would just go to danteacherscrypto.com. This is where you can learn the basics of the basics of cryptocurrency, why Bitcoin is valuable, why altcoins are valuable, investment strategies, things that I would do, uh, safety, how to store your crypto, how to send your crypto, how to uh, make your cryptocurrency work for you passively. That's all over at Dan Teaches Crypto, 100% free. 
it's as simple as that. So look, um, that's what we have. And then the last thing I will talk about is just a little bonus, which is that um, Ethereum uh, is going to come out with ETH 2.0, but don't get excited yet. Let me just read this to you real quick. So ETH developers have confirmed that the Altair is now scheduled to take place on the 27th of October. Uh, and everybody's like, great, ETH 2.0 is here. No, it's not, it's just the second part. Part of the process in the transition is the first main net to the beacon chain. Altair is scheduled to take place at uh, Epic 74240. Everybody says, that's Epoch or, or, or Epoch or Epic, whatever. Uh, that's how I say it. So uh, if we take a look at, uh, this is from ethereum.org, just so you know, as far as uh, the ETH 2.0 upgrades, the beacon chain is the first part and that's live right now. The merge, which is estimated 2021, that's what they're talking about. And then the shard chains aren't coming until 2022, and I believe it's late 2022. So don't think that ETH 2.0 is here yet. I am waiting for it because I've got a ton of Ethereum and uh, that's just how it goes. So look, uh, that's it for today. So if you found some value of it, well, first of all, if you stuck with me all the way in, thanks, I appreciate it. If you if you like that video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing, I think we talk about our time sensitive, but this one was a little bit more uh, off topic, but I think it was important. So that is it for today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.